vlog. Today is Thursday the 25th, I think. Yes, it is. Woo, look at me go. A teacher on summer break still knows what day it is. Recently, I was told by my friend Morgan, who is the beach classroom, that I don't say my name enough on my channel, and it's very difficult to figure out what it is. So, hello, my name is Kim. I am a second year, almost, fourth grade teacher in West Michigan, which hence the name elementary in the mitten. Get it, Michigan, shaped like a mitten. Anyways, so today I'm vlogging. I'm excited about it, whoop whoop. And this vlog is gonna be a couple different things. The first thing it's gonna be is a haul because I just got some boxes from Amazon. So let's just jump right into that part because that's what I like to share and what you guys like to see, I think. And so the first thing that I got is this roll of Better Than Paper, whoop, there it is. Better Than Paper bulletin board paper. I have never used this stuff before personally, but everybody and their mother on YouTube is like raving about this stuff. It's like thicker than normal paper. It almost feels like one of those um, like plastic tablecloths, but not the throwaway kind, like the thick kind that you like fold up and keep, if that makes sense. That was probably a really bad description, but um, basically it's more durable than just like the butcher paper or like the craft paper that you would normally get and I put this on my Amazon wish list. Hi Jack. And also I bought one of these already at Hobby Lobby. I think you can only get them at Hobby Lobby at least. That's all I've, that's the only place I've seen them at so far but I don't have like a lakeshore or anything like that near me. So um, this you can write on with dry erase marker, all that fun stuff. And this one was gifted to me from Mallory. So Mallory, thank you so, so, so much. She also gifted two other things to me. She gave me um, these teacher created resources brand items and I actually have never seen these before so she must have just added them on with her order when she ordered the bulletin board paper so super super kind of her to like go out of her way to look for this stuff that was so nice so really fun just decor and that one and then also she sent over a calendar that's the same kind of line by teacher created resources so super fun thank you so much Mallory for those and then also I got three more rolls of this paper so I'm just gonna hold up this one so I don't have to hold up like all of them I guess I could I guess I could like move them so you can kind of see them let's see let's see here we go here we go Jack is like mom what are you doing so okay now you see them on the ground right there so <laughs> <laughs> I have four rolls of these here. These three on the ground were donated by Nicolette. So Nicolette, thank you so, so much for your donation. And my plan with these rolls is if you guys saw my old classroom, you know I had a whole like faux wood wall um, behind my library and like my couch area. And it was so cute, you guys. I was like obsessed with it. But at the end of the school year, because I was moving classrooms and my whole building's under construction, we had to move like every single thing out. I had to get rid of the wood wall, wood wall. And the paper did not come off very nicely at all. It like all ripped and I was so, so, so sad because my mom and I worked so hard putting that up. And anyways, <laughs> I was like heartbroken. But yeah, that paper is gone. And uh, that was just like the regular like fadeless bulletin board paper. And so so I saw this and I was thinking that I'm hoping this will be more durable and therefore it'll last me like years and years and years and that way if I end up having to move classrooms again I can just take it down and it will come down a little bit nicer if that makes sense so I don't know exactly when I'll be able to put this up in my classroom though because my school is still under construction and it is rumored right now that we will not be getting in until like the Friday or Saturday before the first day of school which is kind of terrifying because we have all day PD on Monday August 27 and then at night we have our open house and we still are gonna have our open house that night like rain or shine building done not done doesn't matter like we still have our open house and so basically I will probably at least at this point unless they get us in early I will have like maybe Friday and then Saturday Sunday and that's it so I might have three days and that's like everything is gone out of my classroom like I'm moving into a brand new room and so I'm gonna have to like be unloading all my boxes getting my furniture in, unloading my storage unit so like guys if you could just say a quick prayer for me and like all the other teachers at my building because everyone's in the same boat that would be fantastic because I'm like a little bit stressed about it just because I really want to do stuff like my wood wall but like I'm gonna have to obviously like unpack my boxes and stuff first so I'm just hoping I can get to everything but we will see so anyways, thank you Nicola and Mallory for these amazing donations. It seriously means so, so much to me. You guys don't even know. I really, really appreciate it. 
And I think now in this vlog, I kind of want to take you guys through and show you some things that I've been working on on my computer. I've gotten a ton of requests to do that recently. Uh, just people who have reached out and said, hey Kim, what are you planning for this school year? What are you creating? So I want to show you guys some of those things. I'm not going to like go super in depth with any of them just because... I don't know, I don't really feel like there's gonna be that many people who want to know exactly like what I have in every PowerPoint and like why I have it. But I will quickly go through just so you guys can kind of get a feel for what I've been working on. And let's do that right now. Let's go to the computer. What do you think, Jack? All right guys, so I'm starting off by showing you guys my curriculum just so you guys can get a feel for this. So this is the Reading Street curriculum. This is fourth grade, you guys can see right there. This is book one or unit one. And I think we have like six units total. I should know that off the top of my head, but I don't remember. So five or six units total. And basically this takes us through five different weeks. So it's a little bit over a month for each book. And then there's also like an optional review week and that's our test week. So that week is a little bit more flexible, but I will say my district isn't like the most strict, but it is fairly strict with like following this curriculum. So I can't show you guys like every single thing in here, obviously, or like stay on one page forever because like obviously this stuff is copyrighted but I will show you guys kind of just like how it's set up so you guys can see it so it goes by each day and then it will say on here like what you need to teach this is like little inserts of the kids books I have some post notes in here that actually were already in here from the teacher who had this book before me so those are not mine but sometimes they are helpful <laughs> and then also the teacher before me like wrote in so there are some different things there but we are told like what we need to teach and a rough time frame of like how long each thing should take but we don't have to follow that exactly but pretty close um all the blue text is what we're supposed to say out loud at the beginning of the year i thought you had to say everything verbatim and i just found out recent not recently but like in the middle of the year probably that you don't <laughs> so that was exciting to find out because some of these things are just like not how i would say them at all um so each week day one is set up basically the same so I'm always doing the same things on Mondays basically just with different stories and concepts and then it will go through and it will do like day two day three etc etc and so there definitely is like a pattern and a structure like I always know which con not exactly maybe which concepts but I know which like categories I guess I'm teaching on Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday if that makes sense so it is kind of nice because there is some structure for the kids um but yeah so that's what that looks like so there is a lot of like me talking at the kids in here and that's just like not really always like my style or like ever really my style. I try to keep it minimum like me talking and then mostly them talking. Like I only like to talk a little bit and just kind of give them ideas and like facilitate their discussion. But I just feel like they learn so much better when they are taking ownership and they're learning and they're actually discussing what we're talking about and practicing and stuff like that. So I don't do this exactly as it's written. However, I do have to teach like with my curriculum book out. I do need to follow what I'm supposed to be doing. Like it is, it's kind of just one of those things and it's, it's one of those things that I have to do in my district and I think a lot of people have to do in their districts. So I am grateful that my principal trusts me enough to make some changes and maybe move some things around sometimes um, but at the same time I can't just say like oh you know last week my kids had a lot of trouble with point of view this week I'm gonna teach point of view again because then we've already like moved on I guess I mean I can do it in my small groups and like review it then but I can't decide like to just push back a week so the idea is that any school that you go to at my district We'll be teaching the same concepts the same week, basically. The same stories the same week. So I don't have a lot of flexibility to, like, pick my own stories and stuff like that. But, you know, that's just how it is. So I like to make PowerPoints to go along with my lessons. They help me kind of keep my pace up. And I just think it's helpful to give the kids some of my questions in writing that I'm going to ask. Some visuals. And I just, I really like having a PowerPoint in the background. Now, it's not like a super wordy thing or they're not like copying down, taking notes. It's just kind of something that helps me not just read my book, to be honest. And just kind of, it helps me plan and it helps me um, kind of just conceptualize like what I'm teaching for the week. So I'm going to show you guys my unit one week one PowerPoint. Now I'm just showing you guys this 
on my laptop. I'm not gonna do a screencastify, even though that would probably be better quality, so I apologize, but I just feel like this is like a casual setting. We're all friends here, so I'm just gonna show it to you on here. So, what I do is I take the concepts from the week, the main selection, paired selection, uh, comprehension skill, strategy, word analysis, spelling, conventions, literary terms, and writing from the book. So that's like all the concepts I'm teaching this week. And I just put it on that first overview. The kids never see this specific slide, but this is really helpful for me in my thinking about the week, my planning for the week, et cetera, et cetera. Um, however, we do have like a little concept um, focus board type thing in our like English bulletin board area and it does have like these things on it so the kids can remember like what we're learning about that week so that's there another thing I do for my PowerPoint slides is I make like all of the outlines for Monday the same color and then like Tuesday's different color, Wednesday's different color, et cetera, et cetera, because it just kind of helps me see like what's what. So kids don't see this slide, and then it says Monday, kids don't see that slide. The first slide they see is our weekly question. So this is the question that we're looking into during the week. Then these are just like basically straight from the textbook. We have amazing words more stuff from the textbook. And so this is where I start to get a little bit more creative. So like I'm told that like I have to teach this concept, but I don't like I'm making these slides on my own. And then what I'll go back and do when I'm actually planning for the week is I'll write down here like how I want to go about doing this. So if I decide I want to play a game or if I decide we're going to do, um, you know, a discussion for it, then I'll write that down here. So I do my planning for the week in my like speaker note area of my Google Slides, if that makes sense. And it doesn't mean I have to follow it 100 percent, but it just gives me some ideas then. So there is that. We do a spelling pretest every Monday. I'm just gonna like quickly go through these, you guys, because I don't think anybody was wanting me to go through every single one. So I'm just gonna go through this whole week quickly for you guys so you can kind of get an idea. Also, you'll notice sometimes I have blank slides in there. That I just leave in there as a placeholder and to tell myself like I was thinking about adding something else but I wasn't sure if I was going to or not. So I do sometimes put like those placeholders in there just to remind myself to go back and look at that section in my textbook to see if there's anything I wanna add or change. And that's just, just how my brain works. But yeah, when I'm reviewing for the week, like this is what I'm looking over. And then I'm pulling out my book and I'm looking at that too. But like at this point, I've already looked at the book. Like I already know what I'm supposed to be teaching. So it's more of just a review than like studying my textbook, if that makes sense. So this is going through and then Friday's green. So, and then there's spots for me. So like, I don't ever put my screen down. This is just right on the whiteboard. And so like, if you see these like boxes here, it means I'm gonna be writing on the whiteboard with the kids or I'm gonna have the kids walk up to the whiteboard and like, I'll leave some space right there. So I do that because we're writing all over this. So that's another thing too, is like my textbook, a lot of times will be like, write this on the, on the board. And like, I don't have time to write, you know, 10 sentences on the board and then have the kids work with them. Like I'd rather just have them on the board and then we work with them. You know what I mean? So yeah. So that's one week of my ELA PowerPoints. Kind of fun. It takes me probably like six hours start to finish to finish this because I'm going through my book and I'm reading everything and like coming up with ideas, planning it, copying and pasting those images in from my online textbook, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it takes quite a while, but I do feel like it's worth it for me. And then I can reuse these year after year until we change our curriculum and then I won't. But until then. <laughs> So hopefully that's kind of what you guys were wanting to see. I did get quite a few questions about that on one of my videos where I mentioned I'd been working on those. So hopefully <laughs> that's what you guys were wanting to see. Um, if not, just leave me a comment below and let me know what you were actually wanting to see and I can help you with that. Um, also, I did just start posting some things to TPT. Um, I get comments all the time, you guys, that are like, hey Kim, where do I get your labels? Or where do I get this or that? Like, do you have it on your TPT? And I am really bad about posting on there, you guys and I need to be better because I make so much stuff for my classroom and then I just get busy and I don't ever think to post it on there because um, it does take a little bit of time to like list it and put in the description and make like a thumbnail thing for it and all that stuff. So I honestly just never do it and so I need to start doing that this summer. That's one of my goals for the last little bit of the summer is to get some things put on there that I've made maybe in the past and can list on there. But I did list something the other day so I'll show you guys that. Um, I actually 
was working with my reading strategies book because here let me put you down and I'll just sit on the ground a second <laughs> there's a trend in this video I'm just sitting on the ground the whole time but that's fine so I was working with my reading strategies book this is from Jennifer Saravalo um, I'm not sure if that's how you say her last name but that's how I'm gonna say it right now I was working with this book because it's an amazing book if you haven't read this you definitely need to get your hands on it she also has a writing strategies one and a ton of other books too and anyways I was using this to prepare for my tutoring and decided I was gonna make these cute little tabs to show all the goals so all of the goals are on there and then on the goal like goal one goal two it'll say what the goal is so in her book she sets it up so it's in different goal sections to make it easier to find like what you're looking for and then I made like a little cheat sheet for the front of the book and I did post this on TPT I did the colored version which is what I have and then also I posted a black and white version so if you're interested in that I will have my TPT store link in the description box don't feel like you have to buy it but if you'd like to it's there so this is another thing I worked on and then I just had it my Cricut cut it out these are not laminated because I'm the only one using this book um, unless I like loan it out to a friend I guess it's not like my kids are going through this so I didn't feel like I had to laminate these circles these tabs but I'm really excited to have it set up in this way I think it's gonna be a lot easier for me to find what I need in here and I'm just pumped about it so I did work on that the other day also I've just been making a ton of stuff for tutoring and I want to kind of put it together and I want to put it in like a big pack on TPT because I've made a ton of stuff this summer for that uh, but that's just not something I'm able to do like today so maybe soon but not today I will show you guys kind of like a sneak peek I guess <laughs> I don't know if we'll call it that but a sneak peek or like a little a little view of what I've been doing so I have been working with a fourth grade student and we've been working on reading and also math and so in reading we are working on multi-syllabic words and breaking them into chunks as well as breaking them into syllables and identifying which vowel sound is in each syllable multi-syllabic words uh, tend to be more difficult for the student that I'm working with so that's why we're honing in so much on those and it's been really successful so far so I'm really excited about that so let me just show you guys what I made so we've been working with different affixes so suffixes and prefixes and uh, I don't know why I put suffixes first I feel like prefixes would make more sense to be first but anyways I just made all these sheets I made two versions of each because I couldn't decide if I want wanted the meaning on there or not so I do have one page that has the meaning for each one can you guys even see that I don't know I'm sorry if you can't but yeah I'll just quickly go through this but yeah so this is what I worked on and if you see some that have the text box box right there on the side it's because those are some of the words that she's gonna have to know in fifth grade so I was looking ahead to um, her reading street words for fifth grade to try to figure out if there were any that I could like make happen in here so maybe it's not as hard for her when she gets to that point so anyways I worked on that and then also I've been using this that I made and it's based on this anchor chart now I cannot remember it off the top of my head who made this but I think she does sell um, like some like a poster like this or something in her TPT store so if I can remember and if I can find who made this I will link her in the description below or put in like a little thing right here but um, I've seen this all over Instagram and Pinterest and so I made something kind of similar like based off of that that I put in a like little whiteboard sleeve thing a dry erase sleeve and we use this each time to work with different place values and it's been really really helpful so I made that and then I made these little conference cards for writing today these are not in my TPT store and I don't think I will post them because these were modeled after something I saw on fantastically fourth's Instagram page she has something very very similar and I'm guessing she probably sells it in her store but I'm not positive so go check her store and see but I will not be posting them just because like I didn't come up with that idea you know what I mean so yeah this is what I've been working on and then let's see if I can show you anything else oh here are my tabs so this is what you would get oh no those aren't my tabs that's something else I was working on but here are um, here's the product that I have in my TPT store now and then this is what I made today for tutoring i just make everything in one big document and then split it up and then also i made this little thing the other day for the end of my um tpt product so i was proud of that and i made a new little like icon thingy so i've been making a lot of stuff it takes like a decent amount of time but also like it's kind of relaxing 
and there's some pictures of me. There you go. These are my little highlight pictures that I made for my Instagram. There are still a ton of things that I want to do this summer to make my life easier in the fall. Um, one of those things is maybe making some more of the PowerPoints for my Reading Street curriculum and uh, getting those ready for back to school time so that way it takes the load off of me when I actually go back to school because honestly they are not my favorite thing to make. I don't really enjoy it. They take a lot of time and they're just, you know, they're all very similar because it is structured the same way so it's not as fun as making stuff like for small groups and tutoring and stuff like that so um, yeah but I do plan on making some more of those and right now I am all the way through the first unit at least so that's good so I have the first five weeks of PowerPoints and basically like a lot of my planning then also done um, because now when I plan for ELA it's not going to take me nearly as much time as if I hadn't done those so Anyways, that's kind of a good feeling, but lots to do still this summer, but nothing that I like have to do, you know what I mean? More things that I want to do until I get in my classroom and then it'll be like crazy setup. I do want to vlog those days, but you guys, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know if I will really be able to because it's going to be insane. Like, everybody's going to be probably like all over the place. Everybody's going to be there from like sun up to sundown. Like... Uh, it's gonna be crazy, but I think I'm gonna vlog it. I'm gonna try to vlog it if I can so because I've been watching so Many classroom setup videos and just like teacher vlogs. Actually, that would be a fun thing to talk about right now um, Who do you guys watch other than my channel on YouTube? I would love to know I watch a ton of people. Let me just go to my YouTube right now so I can tell you some of those people um, I watch a ton of Maylene mrs. Calls campers. I love her videos. You need to check her out if you you haven't already she is pretty fantabulous she is one of my internet friends but also in real life friends um she became my in real life friend from being my internet friend i also love watching jess she is hello third grade and she um she just made her channel i feel like not like super long ago and she's already at like 16k she's doing awesome i'm looking at her last videos right now she had a video that was posted two days ago and it already has over 108 thousand views which is pretty amazing so Jess is killing it you should go check her out she's like the coolest person I know um for real like she's just like really cool she's one of those people that you're like you want to be friends with me with me are you sure okay so yeah she's totally one of those people I love her so go check her out um let's see who else I watch a ton of Fernanda from um, that one happy classroom. She's so cute. And I met her in Miami and she's like just as kind and genuine as you would expect her to be from her videos. She was pretty amazing. So everyone I said so far I have met in person um, from that Miami trip, which is kind of cool. Let's see here. I also have been watching a lot of Haley Caitlin. Her channel name is Haley Caitlin and she is a first year kindergarten teacher. She's super super cute I've been watching a ton of Jazzy from the glam teacher. She's doing awesome uh, Early adventures, which is Shelly uh, Brie from Breadiful teaching Bridget letter classroom. Oh You know who I just started watching. What is her first name? Her channel name is putting them first. She's super super cute She is going to be a first year first grade teacher. She's Adorable. I'm like obsessed with her personality. Uh, her name, I don't know what her first name is. Oh no. Um, I'll try to look it up and I'll put it right here somewhere. But yeah, I don't know what her name is, but she's super cute. So you guys should watch her. She has like a really fun personality and she's just like, she's super cute. I also watch Leslie from Life in Fifth Grade and I think her channel name is probably changing soon because she just went down to second but she's really fun too and she's fun because she posts more than just teaching stuff like she posts a lot of like lifestyle type things um, of course I watch Brit from Five Foot One Teacher I love Brit oh my gosh she's like the cutest human I've literally ever seen um, Jen from Genuine Teaching of course, Morgan from the Beach Classroom and Chelsea from Teaching in Pearls and just so, so, so many people. Oh, also I just found out one of my friends from college who I haven't seen in like forever. She actually has a YouTube channel. She teaches down in Florida now and her channel name is The Blissful Biologist. So she's a high school teacher. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, you should go check her out because she's really, really so those are my shout outs and I think I'm just gonna make this like the end of this vlog because I feel like this is probably pretty long even though it was like all you know one 
big clip basically <laughs> not quite but basically but hopefully you guys enjoyed it make sure to give it a thumbs up if you're not already following me on instagram please go follow me over there and just remember that you guys are so incredibly beautiful and loved and i will see you guys next time bye guys Thank you.